On today's episode, we'll take a look at getting offended. It is commonplace these days that we hear of a lot of people being offended or a lot of people taking offense to statements or a lot of people reacting angrily. And, and I think it's especially pronounced now with social media and with uh, online groups. Especially because when an individual gets offended, they already have immediate link or immediate, immediate contact with a group. And especially on social media where we basically tailor our friends or our groups to suit our interests so people with like minds and similar interests tend to be grouped together irregardless of distance so i think it's easier now to be offended and feel right just because i have immediate contact with a lot of people who have the same ideas as me so I think this is one of the major fa contributing factors to being offended right now and why it's so easy and popular to be offended. It's because I can immediately get support for my opinion or justification for my opinion. And it's a bit like I really don't have to reflect before I act angrily or before I openly um, state that I am offended. So the introspection part of it is out, which involves when something happens, looking at the situation, running over the situation in our mind a bit, trying to figure out where things went wrong, what went wrong, and what are solutions, what can be the remedy for the situation. All of these seem to take second position. The first position now is being offended and being angry and gathering support for that and rallying now some kind of response to being offended or coming up, coming up with ideas without really taking the time to think about the situation or the scenario. And we see this taking place over all fields, all facets, from social issues to educational issues and um, let's say the day-to-day -day, uh, bureaucratic issues, governance, even international issues, everyone seems to have an opinion that is immediately heard. Because part of the opinion forming process is getting feedback or getting opinions from a, a very or a broad uh, spectrum of individuals different age groups uh, from both genders from let's say uh, different political mindsets uh, different levels of experience different um, financial standing all these different um, points of view usually come into place and are considered before making a public statement or a public decision or, or taking a public stance. <clears throat> but all this seems to, as I say, take second place now because it's fashionable now to be offended. It's fashionable to be um, a victim. And the second point I want to bring to that, so th that's the issue. But the point I want to bring to that is that taking a victim stance or being offended, it puts you in a, in a weak position. It puts you in a position of Somebody else has the power to influence me. And I'm not talking about 
I don't want to be ruled or I don't want to be told what to do or what is right to do or any of those things. All I'm saying is by being offended, I take the position of a victim or I take the position of somebody who is not independent in thought. I become somebody who is who is open to the influences and the tides of thought and statements and ideas that circle around me without the ability to protect myself and my emotions from the world. So placing oneself in a victim position, let's say, conditions us to be weak. It conditions us to not have our own thoughts that will protect our identity, to protect our ego. And we know traditionally speaking, uh, the ego is seen as a bad thing. <clears throat> that when we say, that when we say um, a person has a inflated ego or a, is egoistic, that we think of that as a negative quality. But the ego, let's say, it's my opinion about me. It's what I think of myself. That's what the ego is. An inflated ego or a corrupted ego, uh, an ego that is out of control, is an ego that overvalues me or underestimates my own flaws or puts me in my mind above everybody else when actually I am relatively speaking at the same level as everyone else and this is not discussing financial position or this is not discussing uh, social standing I'm talking about that as an individual with emotions and with health issues with my body, with my mind, uh, thoughts. There's nothing really that separates me from anybody else. So the ego of somebody who understands this is humble. Is somebody who, who accepts the world, realizing that I am a human, human being the same way everyone else is a human being. And when we take that into consideration, I will have philosophies and thoughts and ideas that protect my ego from, well, becoming overinflated, but also from becoming underinflated. And this is a mechanism to protect us from being offended. There's, so to go out and to actively try to eliminate all the sources of offense is unrealistic acting out aggressively just because I have a group around me who share my same level of offense or my same idea of what is offensive also is a bit detrimental because it might be a group of people who may very well share the same character flaws as well as the same opinions about those offenses offensive so I think this is a stance we need to, 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 to take when we look at the, the concept of being attacked or offended by someone. That it is, in my opinion, a sign of weakness to be offended. It means I have let something come into my ego, my field, my sphere that can disrupt me without me being to do anything about it in myself. And it's not, an, it's not a, a good position to come from with a counter-argument or with a counter-measure in order to correct what has happened. So I'm not even saying it is wrong to be offended about the actions of somebody else but when we seek to deal with that action, we have to come from a place of strength. 
And being offended is not a place of strength. Being offended is a place of weakness. So, now what do we do with that? Doesn't mean that I should no longer be offended. I think feeling hurt or or something resonating with us or touching a, a sensitive spot in our emotions is a sign that something might be happening that needs to be looked at or paid attention to. So it's not wrong to be hurt. It's not wrong to be um, taken aback by something that somebody says or does. But we have to be careful with what is happening in mainstream, which is we react on offense first and probably sometimes never even think about the, the consequences. So it's just a slight shift in the thought process and not so much a shift in not being offended. So I, this is my simple thought on the, the process involved in being offended and the reaction or the, the, the measures to take to resolve in an offense or a transgression towards us. And this doesn't happen, have to be something that happens in the public sphere because <clears throat> we see a lot of incidents, murders and crime where people have been offended or felt offended and reacted by murdering somebody. So it, it is a real issue in society today that people cannot work through the process of being offended. So it really is something we need to pay attention to. It really is something that is, if it's not corrected, if we don't learn how to deal with it, well, a few people have gone to the extreme end already and if we don't figure it out, it could escalate to where that becomes normal to act that way. That it's understandable. So this is my short presentation today on being offended and reacting angrily. And I hope it opens up and I hope it opens up a line of thought into figuring out how to resolve issues of being offended. And I hope it points the way to to resolving issues without anger. So this was my short presentation today on Diksha. Feel free to give me some feedback on Sankhya Television's Facebook page or email at info at My name is Omkar Singh. I will see you next time.